Uh, how are you guys doing today? Ah, uh, come on, you do better than that. How are you guys doing today? Awesome. Uh, feel free, drink. It makes it better, trust me. Uh, my name is Jeff Jenkins. Oh, please, sit down. Calm down. Uh, I'm just kidding. That was a joke. Okay, there we go. That's how that's going to work. Um, uh, I'm from uh, Springfield, Missouri, uh, which is, we all know where that is, down the street a little bit. And uh, I uh, own a group down there called the Skinny Improv. And uh, thank you. How are you? Good to see you. Yes. Yes, Amy, good to see you. You were there the other day at a wedding. Yeah. Hi, Amy. Nice to officially meet you. You're welcome. Uh, Amy's brother, George, is our host. And uh, so it's good to finally meet you. So uh, anyway, we do something called improvisational comedy. Now, by round of applause, how many know what improvisational comedy is? You familiar with it? Okay, good. Good. How many by round of applause have no idea what it is? No idea what it is. Oh, good. We're all on the same page. That makes this a lot easier. What we do for all of those, let's put a definition on it, is uh, we make it up as we go along. We have no idea it works out. We base it off the suggestions that we get from people, surround, people around us. Let me say that again. We make it as we go along. We base it off the suggestions of the people around us. and We have no idea how it's going to end. Just like life. Okay? When was the last time your day went exactly like you planned it to go? Today? 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 Who said that? Oh, she's at the bar. Okay. Uh, anyway, it, life is improvised. You make it as you go along. Now, I am not the smartest man in the world, nor am I the, the most handsome man in the world, nor the most talented man in the world. I stumbled upon improv comedy about 15 years ago when I was going through a divorce. Okay? I needed something to wrap my mind around other than my problems. So I saw this group in Dallas called Four Day Weekend. I watched them do improv. And if you've never seen live improv comedy, then you need to book the Skinny Improv. So um, we'll come up and do a show. But I was watching this magicians just weave and weave this whole story, and they're walking on a tightrope without a net, and I'm going, oh, what's going to happen? And I began to take classes, and I was horrible at it. And as I've grown over the last 15 years and started the Skinny about 10 years ago, I quickly realized that there is a correlation between what we do on stage to entertain people and what happens in life. It's all very philosophical, it's all very abstract, and the things I'm going to share with you today in my short time, are there's things I want you to really focus on and try to find one nugget that you can take home with you today. One thing that you can say, you know what, that's going to be something I need to look at. And I'm not, I'm not going to give you 17 steps to a happier life or you know, 15 steps to, make a, to be better at parties. If you want to tell jokes, go buy Milton Berle's joke book. It's the best one because he stole from everybody, okay? Go grab it, tell some jokes. But what I'm going to do is talk about some of the correlations and some of the connections that I've found in performing an improv and just living my life. You know, I make a lot of mistakes. I'm human. We all do. And there's been things that I've found as improv has shaped me not only as a performer but also as a human being. And that's what I want to share with you guys today, okay? One of the first things that we do in improv is we always say yes. Everybody say yes. And then we add a word and to it, and. Everybody say yes, and. That means we agree with what's being given, and then we add new information to that. We're contributing and sharing. I'm going to talk about that in just a moment. Another thing we do in improv is we communicate, listen, because we're making it up as we go along, okay? We don't have a script. We don't know what's coming next. And if we're not listening, we're going to miss something, and we're going to miss the opportunity to create something brilliant. Another thing we do is we focus on the relationship. And those are the three things I'm going to share with you guys over the next few minutes. And at first of all, I want to explore the relationship. The relationship is improv is the most important thing. Why? Because without it, you got nothing. Relationships in your life, without them, you got nothing. How many ever rode in a car with somebody you didn't know very well? How awkward is that? That is singularly one of the most awkward moments in anybody's life. And trust me, I've had more awkward moments than anyone else, okay? So you're sitting there, you're, what do you talk about when you're driving in a car with somebody you don't know? The weather, nothing, sports, not politics, you know? But you don't talk, I mean, this is, but what if you're riding in a car with somebody you do know? How's that feel? Talk about whatever you want. You could talk about weather, sports, politics, or you don't have to talk. One of the best things is when you don't have to share and things are still being communicated. Okay? So let's use this little example. Let's say I'm driving to this conference today, this summit today, and I'm riding with somebody I don't know. Okay? He's right here. I'm here. I normally don't drive standing up because that's dangerous, but <laughs> you want to be able to see me. So, driving.
You can change the music if you want. I mean, <laughs> not a big Miley Cyrus fan on there. Tom, thanks for riding with me, man. Appreciate it. Tom, I cry myself to sleep at night. I am a lonely, lonely man. <laughs> you know, I keep people close enough to keep me safe and them interested, but you know, uh, what if you did that? How would that feel? <laughs> if you're not investing in the relationship, you can't share. There's no experiences. So when you're improvising your life, you want to find relationships that you can share. I mean, this life, this life thing is hard enough as it is, and if you want to create a great scene, what we call an improv, a great scene, and the great scene is your life, and when you look back and you want people applauding, saying, you know what, I want to be a part of that. If you want to create a great scene, you have to invest in relationships. You have to say, I want to be important to you, and I want you to be important to me. I want to mentor you. I want you to mentor me. I want to invest. What can I do to help you? What can... Make those decisions to focus on those relationships. Okay, here's what I'm going to do. I don't have a fancy PowerPoint. Our website needs a little help. Uh, we don't have any advertisers, so I brought that for you guys. What we do is we just sell a bunch of post-it notes individually, and then people put them on the computer, whoever they want advertising there. Uh, so what I'm going to need to do is, uh, I don't have a PowerPoint. You guys are my PowerPoint. Remember when I said yes, and you guys said yes? That means you'll help me out, okay? Uh, so I need two people who want to help me out with this, with this little exercise. Go ahead, come on up. Yes, ma'am. There we go. One more? Need one more? Yeah, go ahead and come on up. Let's give them a great big hand, everybody. There they are right there. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Okay, cool, good. Um, Amy, nice to officially meet you again. And then you are? Angela. Angela, very nice to meet you. Everybody say, hey, Amy. Hey. Everybody say, howdy, Angela. Hey. All right, so uh, excellent. You guys are from the city here in Jeff City that we're from? Okay. Uh, what, do you, what do you do up here? I work at Larryfield Communications. Larryfield Communications, and what do you do up here? Uh, I'm an editor. You're an editor. Okay, very good, excellent. All right, then you guys are going to be very good. What's going to happen now is I'm going to be hosting a cooking show, okay? And uh, what's going to happen is... Uh, Amy and Angela are going to, anytime I need a line of dialogue, I'm going to stop and point to them, and they're going to fill in the blank, okay? So, again, you, no, don't go. Stay. Um, you can be as wild as you want, as crazy as you want, as normal as you want. It's up to you, okay? So when I point, you fill in the blank, okay? So let's practice. Angela, uh, just point when I fill in the, point to, I want to fill in the blank when I point to you, okay? Uh, Dad, give me some money. I'm going to the bank. Good, let's get crazy like that. All right. Uh, <laughs> woo! No, that's, that's okay. Most people sleep to what I do anyway. All right. Uh, so that's how that works. You got any questions? I don't. Okay, good. Excellent. You clear? All right, let's get something from the audience. Uh, listen, ma'am, right here. How are you doing? Uh, excellent. You're making eye contact, and that's a good thing because if you don't make eye contact, or you, uh, here's the thing uh, don't look scared because I smell fear and I'll come after you, all right? So. <laughs> But eye contact, but ma'am, there's a difference between eye contact and psychotic stare, okay? So let's maybe <laughs> find our balance there. More blinking, it's creep. I'm just kidding. Uh, uh, what is your name, ma'am? Jill. Jill. You know what, can I just, hold on a second, uh, you guys stay. I, I didn't know that the name tag thing was like careers, because I got here late, you know? So I'm like, man, Jefferson City people have the coolest last names. <laughs> it's like Steve Superheroes, like that's awesome. It's fantastic. It's like Gary Rocket Science. What? And mine was like Jeff Chef, because it rhymed. Uh, I'm sorry, Jill. Right? And what do you want to be when you grow up? Teacher. Okay. Did you mean that, or you just wrote it? What What do you do now? Are you sure you hesitated? Most the most exciting thing I can think of. Computer engineer. Uh, okay, Jill, I'm sorry. I'm, uh, I need a suggestion. What would you like to see cooked on this cooking show? Anything in the whole wider world, uh, anything you want. Chocolate chip cookies. Very good, excellent. Okay, again, when I point you, fill in the blank, be wild, crazy, normal, whatever you want to do. Well, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to today's episode of Cooking, Cooking, Cooking. I'm your host, Tom Thomerson. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about one of my favorite recipes, and that is the chocolate chip cookie. I have loved cho chocolate chip cookies ever since... I failed kindergarten. <laughs> I was a dumb, dumb child. And the reason I failed kindergarten was because I ate, I ate too many bananas. And although high in potassium, full of stupid. It's not true. So 
But my mom, I came home crying one day and said, Mom, I want to make something that I enjoy. And she taught me how to make chocolate chip cookies. Now, this recipe has been in my family for about... Crap, 12 years. <laughs> so, so since she gave it to me when I was in kindergarten, that makes me 17. <laughs> Pretty successful now. Take that, bananas. <laughs> so one of the first key ingredients in making chocolate chip cookies is you want to get lots of help. Lots of help. <laughs> Never do this on your own. Never do this on your own. So first thing you need to do is you need to heat the oven up. You want to put the oven on about two or three degrees. Two or three degrees. <laughs> My cookies are a subtle process. <laughs> you don't want to dive right in and jump right in, all right? So after you have that on two to three degrees, you want to get your ingredients. Now, normally you're going to have butter and sugar, chocolate chips, but I like to put something special in my chocolate chip cookies. I like to put paprika. paprika because I like my cookies with a little spice. <laughs> All right, so you got the paprika in. Now milk is an important thing. A lot of people like to put a cup, cup and a half of milk. I like to put a cow's worth, a cow's worth of milk. <laughs> That's why I have all these cows here behind me. We're here on a farm. Now the way to milk a cow properly is to Start out slow and gentle. You never want to surprise a cow. You want to... Okay, this is... A, okay, so after the, the cow's been milked slow and gentle and promised to call, uh, you move on. And the next thing you need to do is actually bake the cookies. You put them on the baking pan. You put them in. The important thing, you want to leave the cookies in the oven for about... About a week. <laughs> just leave the oven on and go about your business. It's just two or three degrees. So you get the cookies out. You get a big old glass of milk because you have plenty. Uh, and then uh, I like to serve them with a very special thing. And I like to serve them with party rock dancing. Party rock dancing. <laughs> and that's how you make chocolate chip cookies. Let's give them a great big hand, everybody. There they are. Go ahead and have a seat. Awesome. So the relationship, the relationship is important. I put my trust in whatever they said. I gave them power over my future. I said, you take and do what you want with me. And that's what we do in relationships. Whether positive or negative, we're giving those people power in our relationships and how they dictate our lives. Who you are, look who's around you. Are the relationships in your life building you up or are they tearing you down? Are they getting you closer to goals or distracting you? Uh, I used to be in, in a show in Branson. Um, you can tell I look very country. Uh, and one of my favorite jokes was a guy was like breaking up with his girlfriend and um, she's like, well, I hope. They had a horrible relationship. They had a big fight. She's storming out the door, slams the door, comes back and says, I hope you never find anybody like me again. He's like, I don't want to because I didn't want you. Uh, do we have those people in our lives? Do we have those type of relationships where we find the same type of people again and again and again that are bringing us down rather than move us forward? Because if you have a strong relationship, your scene's going to be strong. If you're going to have people that you trust around you, you're going to be able to make a difference. The attitude is what makes it happen. So look for those people around you and say, are these relationships, if we're improvising our life, if we want to say, I want the best scene I can have, I want people to stand up and applaud and say, yes, that was a great scene, then make sure you have the relationships you need to move yourself forward. And it's people like that that are in this room that are hungry for knowledge, that want to make a difference, that want to make an impact. Look for those people, connect with them. The next thing we do in improv um, is we communicate. Now, it's important to communicate in improv because, like I said earlier, we don't have lines, okay? We don't know what we're doing. We make it up as we go along. And people ask us that, do you really make it up? And I'm like, yes, we do. We can't, we, we're not that good. Uh, actually have scripts, so we don't know. Uh, but that's what, it's like, uh, Carlton, you said you made your uh, presentation up last night. Well, I'm making it up now, so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but the communication, and if you're going to improvise your life, if you're going to have a powerful scene, if you're having a great scene where people applaud you at the end, you've got to have strong communication skills and listening skills. We as humans, we don't listen very well, do we? 
we, we hear, but we don't listen. There's a difference between hearing and listening. A lot of times what we're doing is just we're waiting for the other person to stop talking so we can start talking. And that doesn't help us solve any problems. That doesn't help us move around. That doesn't help us do anything new in our lives. And we're stuck in the same type of behavior and the same type of thing. And our scenes are going to get boring and stagnant. To go someplace, you've heard this a thousand times, to go someplace new, you've got to do something you've never done. And the same type of thing in improv, we say it right here. We say, if it, keeps, if it feels weird, keep doing it. That means eventually that becomes normal. And the confidence grows. Follow the fear. The fear will take you someplace. And communicating and listening can provide that, can provide those atmospheres, can provide this place for success. So what I want to do, uh, one of my favorite, I love Emma Thompson, one of my favorite actresses in the world, and she has a great quote. Uh, she says, any problem, big or small, within a family always seems to start with bad communication. Someone isn't listening. Communication begins and ends with listening. Are we listening to each other or are we just waiting for somebody to stop talking? We can inject our opinion, our ideas, and steamroll our thoughts and ideas. So what I need you to do now is I need two more people. So what I want you guys to do, Angela and Amy, I want you to pick two people for me, one person each. Okay, Carlton, all right. Amy? Yep, you, that guy. Come on, come on up, Carlton. Let's go, give him a great big hand. Yay! <laughs> Bill, Bill, scientist. <laughs> from the New Hampton scientist, uh, and Carlton Engineer, uh, nice to meet you. Uh, Jeff, nice to meet you. And uh, what we're going to do, guys, are you guys any good at making sound effects? Yeah. Yeah? Not really. Not I'll really? Try. Okay. The, I appreciate the effort. So what's going to do is, uh, 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 you guys are going to, we're, we're gonna, I'm going to be doing, I'm going to be hunting for something, and you're going to be giving the sound effects anytime I need something, okay? Right. So again, I'm going to be hosting an outdoor live show. Let's say that, okay? So, um, Bill, if I was to open an old, creaky door, it would sound like this. That's pretty good, isn't it? We applaud that. So Carlton, if I was to open an old creaky window, it would sound like what? <laughs> window fell. So, uh, actually, good, 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 good. So let's go, ma'am, right here in the glasses who just stopped making eye contact with me. Uh, just, uh, what is your name, ma'am? Katie, ever say hi, Katie? Hi, Katie. Katie, what did you want to be when you grew up? Uh, an actress. <laughs> Don't do that. Can you wait tables? All right. Uh, uh, Katie, uh, and uh, what do you do now? Uh, YMCA. YMCA, much better. Trust me. I'm an actor, and it's horrible, and I don't ever go to the Y. So, uh, Katie, I need... Uh, what are we going to be doing this outdoor life show? Are we going to be hunting, fishing, or are we, what are we hunting for, fishing for? Turkeys. We, which one? Hunting or fishing for turkeys? <laughs> we're fishing for turkeys? Of course, why not? Yes, of course. So, uh, excellent. So, we're going to be fishing for turkeys. So, anytime I need a, a sound effect, you are going to provide it for me. Okay, here we go. Hey, all right, everybody. Uh, welcome to the new show, uh, Outdoor Living with Bob. Bob's not here. Uh, my name's Jake. Uh, so uh, we're, today we're going to be out hunting, nope, check that, we're going to be fishing for turkeys. <laughs> All right, now you see us, we're already out here on Lake of the Ozarks, in a beautiful, beautiful boat, paddle boat that I made myself, and one of the first things you need, I got right here in this, uh, in this cooler, I'm going to open it up and get out, I'm going to get out my fishing rod, so here we go, I'm going to open this cooler. Excuse me, I'm a <laughs> shouldn't I'm a open it with my foot now. All right, one more time. One, two, three. Get out my fishing rod, put it together. All right, now I'm gonna cast this thing, but first you need to get your bait. All right, so I got my bait right here and right here. I'm just gonna reach down and pick up some bait. So here we go. I crushed it. Just put it on the hook, as I did. And now this is me just throwing the reel out there. Here we go. Ready? One, two, three. <laughs> I ain't throw the crap out of a fishing line, though. <laughs> so if that doesn't work, you just put that right there and let that sit there. Now, I'm more of an aggressive fisherman, all right, because turkeys are hard to find in the water. 
<laughs> but they're there. You got to get the turkey there. Now, the best way to get the turkey there is a classic old turkey call. Now, good thing I brought a turkey call in my fanny pack. <laughs> so this is what the turkey call sounds like on the count of three. Here we go. Ready? One, two, three. <laughs> that actually sounded pretty awesome. I kind of want to hear that again, <laughs> but we won't. So now all the turkeys are coming running. If they don't happen to bite the dead fish that's underneath the water, because they can't swim, <laughs> turkeys don't wear scuba gear. Trust me, I know. Then you need to shoot them, all right? Now I brought my shotgun here, so let me get my shotgun out. I'm going to shoot this thing on the count of three. Here we go. Ready? One, two, three. Apparently, I didn't load it. <laughs> Thanks for making me look like a rock star there. Uh, so here we go. One, two shells. Now it's loaded. There's going to be a noise on the count of three coming, coming from my right side. Here we go. Ready? One, two, three. <laughs> Just a couple cats came out. I got this thing at Sudar City, so... Uh, that won't work, so if the shotgun doesn't work and the fishing don't work, then what you need to use next is dynamite. So, I got some dynamite here. Let me light it. I'll throw it. <laughs> Makes sense. The water put the fuse out. <laughs> and that's how you hunt turkeys. Let's give a great big hand. Excellent job, guys. Thanks, Bill. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. You, that's awesome. Uh, excellent. Uh, well, I didn't even talk about clapping at the beginning of the show. You guys just naturally did it. That's, that's new. Uh, normally, at the end of what I do, there's just a lot of awkward silence. Uh, so we do this thing called and scene to cue uh, the audience to applause. And, and so they go and scene, the audience erupts in thunderous applause. And since we're talking about improvising your life, I want to kind of give you the tips and techniques as well. So I encourage you to use that in your everyday life. If you're done talking to someone, just go, and scene. <laughs> and walk away, and they'll applaud you, OK? <laughs> so keep that in mind. Uh, so we're, we're communicating. And I have got to, uh, uh, if, 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 if I'm listening to what they're saying. They're giving me things. They're, I'm listening to them, and we're making that together. And if they're not clear on the communication, then we're going to miss. That was a fun little bit, Bill, when you didn't make a noise. It made it a fun thing. And in improv, one of my favorite things is the mistake becomes the game. You can do no wrong in improv because the mistake then becomes the game. You make it a part of the scene. But if we're not communicating and I'm not listening to you, if you're making a great noise, Carlton made a great turkey noise. That was, um, I mean, I've done this game thousands of times. That was the best turkey noise I've ever heard, all right? So maybe make an app for it. I don't know. Uh, Turkeynoise.com, it's not. Uh, uh, but if I'm not listening to that, if I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not listening to the gift Carlton's giving, then we're not gonna be able to create something beautiful together. We're gonna, all of us are gonna miss out on that moment. So if he's doing this thing and he's working and he made an effort and he's like, I can't, I can't do it. You know, and I'm like not paying attention or not taking that gift or I'm ignoring him because I'm focused on something else, then we're missing the point of the relationship and we're not communicating together and our scene isn't gonna be as great. But when you're communicating, you're declaring, we say at the top of the scene, you declare what you want the scene to be about. How many times have you sat in a meeting and you knew somebody had a problem and they didn't say anything? Yeah? And then later on at the water cooler, they're like, I can't, it's stupid. It's just dumb, how come we, how come we don't have candy corn yet? It's the third in October. We have pumpkins. Those are stupid. <laughs> That's my impression of myself. So uh, <laughs> if you just declare, just say what's on your mind. Say what's on your heart. Get it out there. Those relationships, because we're building off this thing with together, is we have our relationship. We've invested in those people, and we're declaring and communicating. We're listening to each other. We're investing. We're saying what we need to say to people. Then it continues to grow. Um, the single biggest problem with communication is the illusion that has taken place. George Bernard Shaw, never assume. Ass never assume. Just make that out there. Put that out there. Communicate and get that on there. Last thing I want to talk about as I wrap up my time is one of the biggest things we do in improv to make it work 
is we use agreement. We go back to that phrase, yes and. Everybody say yes and. You agree and add information. And basically what that means is it's not like you always agree with everybody's idea, okay? Have you, but have you ever been around somebody who was the most negative person and no matter what you said or did, they just shot your idea down? How'd that make you feel? Like awesome? Like you want to come back with better ideas? Like, hey boss, I'm going to actually try today. No. Uh, but if you have somebody who's, <laughs> who's going to who's going to listen to your ideas and they're focused on the relationship and they're building on it and sharing. That's what I mean by agreement, okay? We're building and sharing ideas. Uh, what's your name, ma'am? You got really nervous when I talked to you. <laughs> I mean, super nervous. I'm a people person? You picked on me in the free throw line. Then, never mind, I'm over you. <laughs> Did I really? Uh, remember Sally? Oh, yeah, oh, Sally. Remember, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I do 500 shows a year. Oh, like a few weeks ago? Yeah. Oh, that was fun. Yeah, I remember you now. Never mind. Okay. Kayla, good to see you again, Kayla. I was just going to ask if, if this, if you're, it, it's good to see you again. <laughs> all right, let's go right here, because you weren't making eye contact at all. Uh, what is your name? Rachel, everybody say hi, Rachel. Hi, Rachel. You're, I think, more nervous than Kayla was. <laughs> uh, Rachel, ask me if I want to go to the movies and keep trying to convince me to go to the movies. Yeah. <laughs> Rachel, we're not really going to go to the movies, okay? We're not going to go on a date. What's wrong with going to the movies with me? Hold on. I'm just kidding. Ask me if I want to go to the movies. No. Keep going. Keep going. No. 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 <laughs> See how desperate she's getting already? <laughs> Tell me anything, okay? Now ask me if I want to go to the movies. Okay. <laughs> I set them up, you knock them down, Rachel. Uh, <laughs> Rachel and I have been doing comedy together for years, and that's our classic bit. Uh, agreement, sharing of ideas, advances, or negativity blocks. That's what I want to talk about. Agreement, you're sharing your ideas. What we do in improv, when I'm teaching a class, I always say this, because a lot of beginning improvisers feel like they have to come in with a whole scene already planned out. You know, and that may be how you approach your life. You feel like you have to have everything planned out. You come into a team meeting, you come into a project, you come in, have everything planned out, everything gotta be last detail. What I tell them is I say, bring a brick, not a cathedral. Okay? Bring one idea. One idea. And then your partner will bring another idea. And they'll add something, and they'll add something. And you're, what you're doing is you're giving ownership of your idea to your team, and that trust that he was talking about earlier becomes even stronger. And you guys create and build something together when you're improvising your life, when you've got the relationship, you're communicating and listening, then you start sharing and building together with the people around you. Bring a brick, not a cathedral, because it makes it so much more powerful if you share the ideas. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar says, five guys individually can't make a difference, but five guys playing as a together, team together can do great things. When you start sharing and building and trusting that, you have some amazing things happen, okay? Uh, what I, I want to do, I want to do one more thing real quick before we unlock the doors and let you guys go home. Um, <laughs> is anybody feel like volunteering? I need like four to five volunteers. Okay, come on up here, ma'am. Okay, my car's, my car's right up front. I just need the oil change. Thank you very much. We're team building. We're sharing. I'm just kidding. Uh, I need four more. Just come on. There we go. Come on up, sir. There we go. Let's give a hand. Uh, just jump up. Come on. Come on. There we go. Come on, someone else. There she is, right there. One more, just one more. Who's Kool-Aid? Oh, there he is. Oh, Kool-Aid. I didn't. There we go. I didn't, I didn't recognize you, Captain Kool-Aid, because you weren't coming through a wall. Uh, All right, stand over here. Stand over here with these guys. You're a team now, okay? Uh, awesome. So we've got, uh, what's your name? Joe, you wanted to be a Jedi. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> Little secret, Joe, I do too. I still do. Uh, I actually want to be Indiana Jones. And when I was a kid, I made up this character on the playground called Oklahoma Bones. And then uh, Spielberg sued me. So, um, but little, little hint, when you're going through the grocery store and the automatic doors, just do like this. And it, it makes you feel like a Jedi, right? <laughs> awesome. Okay, and Matt, you wanted to be retired. And what's your name, Lindsay? Tap dancer? 
I thought it was Tiny Dancer. Yeah. And then Amy wanted to be Connie Chung. All right, well. It's America. Anything can happen. It just changes. Um, so what you guys are going to do very quickly is, uh, together through the power of agreement, you guys have just become a high-powered uh, marketing advertising team, and we're going to get a product from them, and you guys are going to, with my help, facilitating your name of the product, tagline for the product, demographic for the product, celebrity spokesman for the product, uh, jingle for the product, and a commercial for the product, okay? All through the power of agreement. Now, what I want is when somebody throws an idea out, I don't want you to just kind of blase go, yeah, that's cool, you know? I want you to be like, yes, that's awesome. Let's get it. Enthusiasm. I want you to the nth degree, okay? I don't want you judging ideas. I don't want you editing ideas. If somebody says, oh, we should call it floor for floor, you're like, no, that's stupid, Bill. Um, I want you to say, yes, that's the best name ever, okay? And I want you that excitement and that energy, okay? Are you excited? Yes. yes. All right. <laughs> Show me your game face, Connie Chung. All right, good. This is going to go really well. Okay, uh, let's get a product. Let's go, uh, ma'am. Hi. Hi. I need a product you use quite often, just like an everyday, like a toothbrush or post-its, okay? Uh, now, uh, could you give me another use for post-its other than writing something down on them or sticking it? Well, wallpaper, okay? So you just, it makes wallpaper, okay? You put it on and just wallpaper instantly appears. Okay. I yeah, just, just wallpaper appears. Love it. I'm excited about it, all right? All right, guys, uh, thanks for uh, coming to the meeting early today. I appreciate it. Uh, and we got a great idea from upstairs. We're going to make a million bucks off this thing. Uh, prepare yourself. It's post-it notes that make wallpaper. Brilliant. I know, right? Awesome. How do you guys feel? Yeah, let's, a little more excitement about it. Uh, yeah. If this is your high degree, I hate to see you guys alone. Uh, all right, so we need a name for this product. What's the name of the product going to be? Shag paper? Oh. I love it. That's awesome. Shag paper. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> You're fired, Connie Chung. Uh, so we need a, a, a tagline. What's the tagline going to be for this thing? Shag paper. No licking, all sticking. <laughs> yes. 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 Shag paper. No licking, all sticking. <laughs> who, we, who, who we targeting? Who's our demographic for this thing? Any, anything's really going to work. We're not just... Thirsty people, yes. Thirsty people. Uh, now, what we need is, uh, who's our celebrity spokesperson going to be? Al Roker, yeah, because if anybody says shag paper, it's Al Roker, and he looks thirsty all the time. Uh, so we got Al Roker. Now, what's our commercial going to look like? Awesome. Okay. How are we going to make it awesome? Lots of, walls. Lots of walls. Al Roker walks in. There's a ton of walls. What happens? The walls are... Right. Right. Yeah. Right. But then in the other room, we've got our shag paper. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. So we need Al Roker and two other people. You guys show me the commercial. Okay. Here we go. Show me the commercial. America's waiting. All right, I'll let you guys off the hook. Let's give a great big hand. Thanks, man. You can go return your seats. Excellent job, guys. Excellent job. Oh, I would buy it. Um, coming together is beginning. Keeping together is progress. Working together is success. When you begin, and we say this in improv all the time, abandon what you want to adapt what the group is creating. And it goes back to what Carlton was saying about the team, about having a team and not trying to do things on your own is when you're improvising your life, don't do it by yourself. Find people to invest in. Communicate. Have that, those, those listening skills and invest in that 
And then as you begin to share each other's ideas and begin to build something together, you're going to look back at your life and you're going to say, wow, I can't believe we just did that. I can't believe we made that up. Because guys, you're the only one in charge of your life. You make those decisions. And you have an opportunity every day to come out of the gate saying, you know what? I'm going to make my scene great today. I'm going to do whatever I can, abandon what I want to adapt what the group is creating. I'm going to focus on positive relationships. I'm going to communicate better with people. I'm going to share ideas. I'm going to be a better team player. And when you do that, I believe in you guys, and I believe it can happen. You're going to go out. You're going to have a great scene, a great show, and the audience, everybody's around you is going to applaud, and they say, thank you for sharing that with me. Thank you for sharing your life with me and making an impact on who I am. So life is improvised, guys. Anybody have any questions or anything? Cool. I have some cards if you want to talk. We can do that. But remember, guys, it's your life. Improvise it greatly. Focus on those relationships. Communicate, listen, share, build each other's ideas, and I know you'll be a success. Thank you guys very much.